Aloha Mai Kako, Valina Mai, Heli Mai, welcome to the Barn Barge channel. My name is Damien and I'm going to be sharing with you today a island themed diorama I call the Tiki Temple. It's full of inspiration and a contest winner, so come check it out. Hey gang, welcome once again to the Barn Barge channel. So today's build, the Tiki Temple, is kind of a throwback build in the sense that it's a craft, a train piece, a diorama I finished nearly three years ago. And it was part of a contest, a contest hosted by a, another crafter that you're probably familiar with. If you're watching this channel, you probably know who I'm going to mention. Her name is V or Vanessa from the Crafting Muse. And she's one of the five guild masters in the Tabletop Crafting Guild on Facebook. She has her own space, uh, her own Facebook page titled The Crafting Muse, as well as a YouTube channel. And she was one of the first crafters that I started to watch when I got into building uh, RPG or D&D terrain crafts. And this particular build was part of a contest. Uh, when she was right around 2,000 subscribers, she hosted a contest and the winner uh, was fortunate enough to win a spiral staircase, one of her signature builds, but with an upgrade, with an LED light. And I was the winner. And it's been a really inspirational experience for me to not only have won the contest, but to receive that gift, the really amazing build from her that you know we used on the table. It's just an awesome piece. So you know, once again, if you haven't seen her site, head over there straight away. Um, right after this video, I'll put the links down in the doobly-doo. But this piece is a little bit more inspirational to me beyond that in the sense that it actually is of a particular spot in Hawaii uh, where I grew up or grew up close to. It's known as uh, uh, the place of refuge or Pu'u Honua Oho Nao Nao. Hono Nao is in uh, kind of the south part of Kona on the big island. And we used to go there all the time when I grew up, you know, whether we were fishing, swimming, barbecuing, learning about Hawaiian culture. Uh, just a really amazing, inspirational spot. And uh, furthermore, it was where I had a memorial service for my mom when she passed away a few years, well, three, four years ago. And what is kind of cathartic about this build is that when I came back from Hawaii, I'm in the Pacific Northwest now, I just kind of started crafting, but when I came back, I went all in. It was a therapeutic process for me and it was right around that time that Vanessa had the contest and I went all in you know everything that I could you know muster in terms of vibes in terms of uh, you know the elements that have impressed me about not only this this temple that I'm sharing with you but the entire entire place of refuge is just a, an amazing spot so I'm going to share a bit of history uh, or Mana'o as the Hawaiians will call knowledge uh, with you about this place. And then from the photo documentation I have of the build, I'll go through the process. And then at the end, we'll have a little bonus section, a little bonus for you guys. Uh, so be sure and stick around to the end. But otherwise, let's learn about the spot. Uh, Pu'u Honua Oho Nao Nao. Pu'u Honua Oho Nao Nao is located in the Kona district of the Big Island of Hawaii. And a Pu'u Honua is a religious complex dedicated to the god Lono. Lono being the god of agriculture, of fertility, of rain, of music, of playing games and this type of thing. And back in prehistory, Hawaiian prehistory, a long time ago, if you broke the law of the land or the kapu, you could actually come here to this place of refuge and seek asylum from the priests that worked here. But it wasn't only just a place of refuge, a place of asylum for, for criminals or those that broke the kapu, but it was a place of learning, of education, of subsistence. Uh, you could find all walks of life at a pu'u honua, ranging from fishermen to gardeners uh, to orators that maintain the genealogies of that particular district. Uh, one of the more famous or central uh, structures of pu'u honua oho nao nao is a temple known as Hali o Keave, which is dedicated to the god Lono, but is also thought to house the bones of a famous chief known as Keave. So this idea of a sepulcher or a temple housing the bones of a chief was really interesting to me in, in a gaming sense, and I wanted that to be the focal point of this diorama. I didn't want it just to replicate the, the, you know, the place of refuge itself, but to be a playable 
component of our D&D game. Uh, we haven't played it yet, but I have a really cool adventure planned. Uh, spoilers for anybody out there that might be in my game. But the idea was that, you know, you would embark on a voyaging canoe, very Moana-esque, and that there would be tiki, or ki'i as Hawaiians call them, these kind of wood golems as a, a challenge or some, some type of interactive component in this uh, adventure. But there'd also be bones, skulls, uh, that the players would interact with uh, through supernatural means to, you know, get information. And it all started with these, these keychain tiki or ki'i that I found on eBay. And I thought, wow, man, that should be, you know, the primary part of this whole temple, the tiki temple. And so not only do they have uh, an interaction with the canoes uh, and that, you know, might be a guardian type of golem, if you will, for this canoe. But then here at the Tiki Temple itself, you know, you have a, a possible obstacle or challenge for the players to encounter as they go for the goal, which in this case would be, you know, the wisdom they can gain from interacting with these skulls here on what's called a, a, an ahu or a platform. So that's kind of the, the, the thinking behind the gaming. Let's go ahead and take a look at how I built this thing. I started the Tiki Temple with two layers of XPS foam and one of the rules we had for this contest was that the dioramas we were building had to fit within a 12 inch square space. And I really wanted to pack a lot into this so I had two levels of foam and you can see I even recessed that foam to accommodate the stairs for it, for it all to fit within that space. I wanted a fence, a wooden fence or a, a pa la owl to wrap around uh, the entirety of the structure so I used barbecue skewers cut to length and sharpened with a pencil sharpener that were soaked in a brown wash to give them a nice wood color. Now I also used sticks from outside uh, to serve as central posts that you see here and then some just basic balsa stringers. And once I had glued those in, into the sizes that I needed I attached the uh, barbecue skewers you know the, the sharpened posts and after all the dimensions were perfect and everything was solid, I gave it a coat of Mod Podge to seal the wood as well as to make it just a little bit stronger. And you can see here how that uh, regular piece of wood, the stick, offsets or you know breaks up the pattern of the skewers, giving it a little bit more of a natural um, a look to it. I finished it off using Roblon or synthetic cell thread that looks like rope in a cross hatching pattern just so it looked like it was lashed onto the wood and not merely glued. But after all that was set up, I did one more coat of Mod Podge and moved to the stonework, which I really wanted to have, you know, kind of a realistic look to it. So I stole a bunch of water-worn pebbles out of my neighbor's garden, rinsed them and then cooked them in a high heat in the oven to kill any microbes, any cooties that were living in there. And then tediously went about my day uh, attaching each one of these rocks with a glue gun you know, as close and as tight as I possibly could onto that first level. Now there is a house or a hallé uh, that's part of this structure and I just used regular XPS foam cut to about a quarter inch thick and you can see how I, I used a pin to complete the stonework not only for the hallé but for the second level. And I'm, I'm going for a basic basalt uh, stone look. Uh, basalt is an igneous or volcanic rock that you find in Hawaii and throughout the Pacific. And so, you know, a black bomb or black base with a dark gray and a light gray does well to capture that basalt color. But being an igneous rock, there's variation. Sometimes rocks will have a high ferrous content and be a little red or brown. And so I used washes to offset a bunch of those stones uh, in order to give it a more realistic look. Uh, one of the things we had to do for this contest was use three uh, elements or three techniques that Vanessa from the Crafting Muse had used in previous videos. And so one video she made had to do with dunes and sedges. The sedges were the end of these ropes and fibers that were glued into the dune. And she also did a really cool video using the same material to make uh, thatching for you know a European style cottage. And so I used her technique, so you can see the ends of these ropes are all glued together with a glue gun and then layered on top of each other, but of course I'm going with a Polynesian theme. You can see the A-frame I made is essentially the way I made the fence using skewers and Roblon for lashing it, uh, all glued, and then I decorated the very top with just a cap of XPS foam and a Polynesian motif. And I also wanted a fire, um, a fire pit that was surrounded by the tiki or the ki'i as, as they're called in Hawaiian. 
and I wanted it to you know have a little bit of spectacle so this was an LED light pretty straightforward affair that I just cut through the foam and attached to my LED base and then used a hot glue gun to make the flame and use regular sticks for the firewood. And I also had another hearth included on the bottom right of the structure that is in actually a, a, a rock mulch garden or a mala. It's where you would grow certain vegetables and uh, areas where they're you know might be prone to drought or, or temperature swings by putting them into a rock mulch garden you actually can maintain the temperature as well as the hydration in order for the plants to grow. So the plants I have here are just railroad uh, model quality uh, the palm trees as well that you see on the corners uh, nothing tricky there just kind of putting them where I thought they looked good and then one of the final elements was uh, a pile of skulls that were on a platform, or are on a platform, known as an ahu. And so for the pile of skulls, I had to go with the old classic Citadel skulls, and those are all glued into just a dollop of the uh, that epoxy I was telling you about, the magic skull, kind of in a pyramidal shape, and then put on top of, um, of the ahu. So here's a close-up of the sedge coconut trees and garden. I've added a little bit of color to the sedges using a green wash and a brown wash, you know, just to make it look a little bit more natural. And then once all of the sedges and all of the plants and trees were in place, I could finish up the rock work. And what I'm trying to do here is match a, a style of masonry that's used in the Pacific Islands known as dry stacking. So it's basically building walls without mortar. Uh, I cheated a little bit. My mortar is hot glue and you can see that there's quite a bit of uh, you know, little boogers and stringers and things hanging off. So it was pretty tedious to go back through, melt that off and pick it off. But the, the end result, I think it's worth it. Um, doesn't necessarily look exactly like you would expect a dry stacking to look, but uh, close enough. And the third video that I pulled from in this was uh, Vanessa's uh, wood crafters uh, wood cutting pile. I forget the exact name, but I'll put, I'll put links to her videos in the doobly do so you can see how all of these are made but it's kind of interesting that last part there that that pile of wood for me just like the dude said really tied the room together and so the way this wood pile this third element of Vanessa's uh, that was used in the diorama tied everything together has to do with the history of the temple and I mentioned how the tiki or the kii you know were were guardians or were you know intended to interact with players as a challenge the goal being the skulls but the backstory has to do with who lived here before and so in my mind's eye and in the game I envisioned that this particular temple would have been occupied by a priest some type of sorcerer that carved uh, tiki or wood golems for a variety of purposes and you know, the, the Hawaiian word for that would be kahuna, which is priest, and kalai, ki'i. Kalai is to carve, and ki'i, once again, is tiki. And so having this pile of wood here was really representative of what the function was for this temple beyond housing the bones. But I didn't want the, uh, the kahuna to actually be, you know, alive and, and a part of the narrative. Uh, so really, it, you know, the way I intended it was for the players to show up at the, at the tiki temple and, you know, enter the Halle and discover a dead body, uh, been dead for quite a while, this would be the priest, and then at some point they would have to defend themselves against uh, the tiki, the wood golems. And then if they defeated those, once again, they would have access to the skulls and then, you know, get the secret uh, wisdom that they were, you know, seeking. There's uh, something else I wanted to point out about the build, which I think is, is kind of important or, you know, kind of interesting, is that it's, even though it's a, a very explicit uh, diorama, the pieces themselves can be used in a modular sense. They're all, you know, they have the ability to stand alone as their own um, terrain pieces. You know, you could have that A-frame used for a variety of things, you know, a little building made of stone. The ahu or the platform would be a great watchtower and ladders, you know, you can use those for anything. The uh, pile of uh, skulls could fit any theme, you know, you could stick them in a sewer, a dungeon. Um, the wood pile could be on any farm, any woodlands. Uh, setting that you had and then of course the tiki would you know they're pretty constrained to the island theme but you could use them in a lot of different applications and this fence you know could be used for a stockade for animals who knows what so there's a lot of modular potential there and I think that's pretty important when building terrain just so you can reuse it and it just doesn't have a one time you know one one showing on the table you want to be able to keep using that stuff if you can 
And I guess that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you today regarding this particular temple. Um, so thanks for stopping by. If you've made it this long, hit that subscribe button, like, and comment. Let me know how you're inspired by your builds. And I think um, we'll just leave it there until our next video. Uh, if you made it this far, once again, mahalo. And we got a bonus track for you. This is an old school uh, backyard jam from a place in Napopo, which is right next to Pu'uhonua Ohonau now. And it's with my fellow barn barge from the Big Island. That's my buddy Moku on the ukulele. And uh, we're on my, my friend Taino's uh, uh, front porch, eating our poo-poos, drinking our beer, and getting our jam on Hawaiian style. And, uh, and you know, if you're not into that thing, I get it. You know, you might want to just go on and head on over to, to Vanessa's channel. But otherwise, stick around. Hope you enjoy the music. And we'll, we'll be coming at you soon with a, with a new video. I think it might be some gas lamps coming up. So hope to see you then. Aloha. Always there, steal my kisses from you. But always there, to steal my kisses from you. Always there, to steal my kisses from you. Live on into Nashville, Tennessee. Three minutes and 30 some seconds. There you go. <laughs> Check it out. Perfect.